Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com to another blog and to another podcast. Welcome to those who access the podcast through Apple Podcasts, Rumble, Spotify, and YouTube. Today we continue our study in the book of Genesis, chapter 12, verses 10 through 16, which reads, Now there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to dwell there, for the famine was severe in the land. And it came to pass, when he was close to entering Egypt, that he said to Sarai, his wife, Indeed, I know that you are a woman of beautiful countenance. Therefore, it will happen, when the Egyptians see you, that they will say, This is his wife, and they will kill me. But they will let you live. Please, say you are my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake, and that I may live because of you. So it was when Abram came into Egypt that the Egyptians saw the woman, that she was very beautiful. The princes of Pharaoh also saw her and commended her to Pharaoh. And the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. He treated Abram well for her sake. He had sheep, oxen, male donkeys, male and female servants, female donkeys, and camels. That's Genesis chapter 12. Verses 10 through 16. Today we continue our study of Genesis chapter 12, where we are given the process whereby our faith in the God of the Bible grows. God intercepted Abram, who was a Gentile before he became a Jew in the land that is known as southern Iraq today. That which made Abram a Jew, which means thank you, was the inculcation of the culture of God into his soul. This is why our faith is so important, because it is the vehicle whereby the culture of God is delivered into our being. Having considered the first few principles involved in the development of our faith, including the Word of God creates faith in the believer, and authentic faith in the God of the Bible leads to obedience to Him. And that obedience to God leads to assurance or reassurance from God. Today, we move forward to the next principle involved in the development of our faith in the God of the Bible. In verse 10 of today's passage, we read, Now there was a famine in the land, And Abram went down to Egypt to dwell there, for the famine was severe in the land. God led Abram to the land of promise, but there was a famine there. Through this very uncomfortable experience, Abram was about to learn the next principle involved in the development of his faith in the God of the Bible, which is God will always test and stretch our faith so that it will grow even stronger. The promised land was mountainous and it was completely dependent upon two seasons of rain in order to grow its crops and to provide water. One of several purposes behind this famine was to teach Abram that everything comes from the Lord and so he was to be completely dependent upon him. He also discovered that direction and deliverance is found in the Lord alone. The famine in the promised land was not what Abram expected, so he made the decision to go to Egypt where food could be found. The man of faith didn't have much faith in that moment, and so he turned away from the place that God had directed him to go, and he looked to Egypt for answers. When we are being defined by anything other than the Lord, we will find that we will come out more unfulfilled than before. In verses 11 through 13 of today's passage, we read, And it came to pass, when he was close to entering Egypt, that he said to Sarai, his wife, Indeed, I know that you are a woman of beautiful countenance. Therefore it will happen, when the Egyptians see you, that they will say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will let you live. Please say you are my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake, and that I may live because of you. Abram was about 
75 years old at this time, and Sarah was about 65. Abram was born 352 years after the flood. When Abram and his people arrived on the outskirts of Egypt, he began to entertain misguided and delusional fears. Abram's fears reached an all-time high when he thought Pharaoh would take Sarah to be one of his wives because of her great beauty. Sarai must have really been a beautiful woman at the age of 65, and Abram was worried that Pharaoh would want her as one of his wives. Since Sarai was half-sister of Abram, according to Genesis chapter 20, Abram was not technically asking Sarai to lie about her identity. This all happened because Abram looked to Egypt rather than to God for his need for food. One bad decision led Abram to make another bad decision. The minute we move away from the control of God, the old self comes to the surface and we stoop to falsehood, hypocrisy, and deceit. Like our faith in the God of the Bible, Abram's faith failed. A husband who is out of the will of God is dangerous to his family and to himself, as indicated in this passage. Since Abram was out of step with God, he placed his wife and his family in jeopardy. Interestingly, there is never a mention that Abram prayed while he was either in Haran or in Egypt only while he was in the land of Canaan. Having said that, I must add that this is the way our faith is developed. There are times that we must fail in order to succeed. In most of these instances, our failure is discovered in our lack of ability to hold up our faith. It is in these crucial moments that we are more convinced that it is the Lord who is the secret to our success. In verses 14 through 16 of today's passage, we read, So it was when Abram came into Egypt that the Egyptians saw the woman that she was very beautiful. The princes of Pharaoh also saw her and commended her to Pharaoh. He treated Abram well for her sake. He had sheep, oxen, male donkeys, male and female servants, female donkeys, and camels. <laughs> Notice those words when the Egyptians saw and the princess of Pharaoh also saw her. It is the way of the world to make decisions on the outward. Oh, it's not wrong to be attracted to one's wife or girlfriend or fiance, but when we're making major decisions, such decisions must not only be made by outward appearance. God always exhorts us to look deeper. Every time we make a choice, we turn the central part of us, the part of us that chooses, into something a little different from what it was before. In this scenario, we are slowly allowing the devil a foothold or we are allowing God to inculcate his culture in us. In Titus chapter 2, verses 11 and 12, we read, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. The word grace appears 131 times in the Bible. And 124 of those times, we discovered it in the New Testament. And then 86 from the pen of the Apostle Paul. It is the grace of God that put our unrighteousness in our past. It is also the grace of God that reveals to us the substantiveness of God's truth in our lives. And when we see that, we will find it impossible to be defined by this world any longer. One of the biggest pillars of God's grace is his patience. 
when we are taught by the grace of God, we will make decisions that are in concert with the will of God. The grace of God teaches us that we are totally accepted by God through the finished work of His Son, the Lord Jesus, on the cross. This means we cannot out God's grace. That means we should never doubt our salvation in Christ. And this frees us to be real and authentic. You see, it is the grace of God that frees us to learn from Him, His culture, which is quite different than all of the cultures of this world. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.